All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night, 10.54 p.m. That's California time. April 7th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 4.7 just outside the Philippines region here. Quite a bit of clustering going on roughly around the Java Trench all through this area, uh, which is uh, fairly typical on any given day. We can see that much earthquake activity, but uh, yeah, it looks a little bit more noticeable right now. Uh, earthquake activity, a uh, little bit of swarming going on here just off the coast of the big island of Hawaii around the Loihi Seamount. This is an underwater volcano, so to speak. Um, probably crest the water, surface of the water, at least the sea surface uh, area in, in quite a long time. It got no telling how many uh, thousands of thousands of years before that takes place. But we do have uh, a little bit of earthquake activity happening out here, six to seven miles deep underneath the area of the Loihi Seamount. Now, that was its former name. I guess this here is the new name, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to go down that road. I'll let you guys uh, do that. Uh, no new updates here on that uh, Seamount. This was put out uh, about four days ago. Seismic activity has been relatively low at the uh, Loihi Seamount. There have been about 20 earthquakes in the past month or so. Uh, occasionally, we do see uh, earthquake activity out there, and uh, just a little bit happening out there across that uh, the south rif southwest rift zone, south rift zone there of the Loihi Seamount. Uh, aside from that, let's go ahead and check out California, see what's going on out here, or at least the west coast for now. Got some movement up here underneath the Oregon area. This is the uh, associated with the Cascadia subduction zone, 23 miles deep here. Uh, for a 1.7. Now, that's not a big earthquake, but it's just the importance there of the uh, location. Let's see what we got for trimmer here today. Not a whole lot. 10 epicenters of trimmer down a little bit further from that uh, earthquake there uh, around the central coast of Oregon. Uh, Washington region, a couple smaller earthquakes around Mount St. Helens. Uh, Northern California got uh, some newer activity over here across the uh, just off the Northern California coastline, 2.8 and a 1.8. Aside from that, uh, moving down the line here, still quite a bit of activity across western Nevada, stretching across that uh, rift, the um, uh, Garlock Fault Shear Zone and northward here around the Ridgecrest. And then also down along the plate boundary here, the San Andreas Fault showing some activity. Nothing big, nothing, not, you know, obviously nothing happening yet. But uh, we could be set into motion here pretty soon. One thing I've noticed is uh, right about the creeping section where it transforms into the park field segment, getting some activity here recently. And that could be a sign here that we're getting really, uh, really close to seeing a six-pointer out here along the park field segment of the San Andreas Fault. It does have pretty much a regular uh, reoccurrence interval there. Uh, our last earthquake of 6.0 on this segment of the plate boundary was back in 2004. So we, here we are, 2025, 21 years later. Uh, regular intervals there between 20 and 22 years. So we could be seeing uh, something pop on that really soon. Got to watch that pretty closely. Uh, aside from that, uh, as you can see there, earthquake activity across Nevada. Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet up there across the board, but let's not just take their word for it, right? Let's just go double check and make sure because a lot of times we'll see earthquakes swarming up here and uh, no mention of any earthquakes. Right now, that does not appear to be the case. Uh, looks pretty quiet out here in terms of earthquake activity. Around the Pitchstone Plateau, that looks like some type of outside interference there uh, to that seismograph station. Oil fields, gas and oil fields out there in Texas, Oklahoma getting hit. New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. Nothing showing up there on the board. A lot of rainfall, though. So far, we have yet to see any uh, adjustment there from all that rainfall. A little four-pointer out there along the Aleutian Trench, 4.5, earlier this afternoon, right on the plate boundary. Aside from that, typical movement up there across Alaska. And most of the newer, larger activity out here across, again, the Indonesia Islands area, 4.7 coming into this region just within the last, oh, wow, within the last half hour or so. This one's pretty deep, though. Compared to the rest of these, it's 160 miles deep underneath this area. That should stir things up further out here across this region. It's been quite active in terms of larger adjustment here recently. 
I suppose there's a couple areas here that are lacking seismic movement right across this area here and maybe just off the coast of Sumatra where you might want to take a or keep a close eye on. But either way, most of the time, the deeper movement quakes out there do tend to get things in motion as far as the plate uh, activity goes. Puerto Rico region, couple twos out there, really nothing major going on. And we got some further activity out here in the central mid-Atlantic ridge of 5.3. This is the area that, uh, well, we had some six-pointers out here just over a week ago. So we have to go back on the last 30 days. A um, couple sixes out there, back on the 27th and 28th. Following these events, man, we've seen a, a trail of uh, large earthquakes out here. Seven pointers and that uh, upper 6.9. All that larger activity followed this movement out here. So, um, possibility we could see some further escalation going on following this 5.3 that struck here just earlier this evening. So, keep an eye on this general region out here. far as the Mediterranean area goes, just typical movement out there. It looks like some twos out around the Greece area. Nothing of any, you know, extraordinary earthquake activity that uh, I can notice there on the globe. Uh, let's see what else we got. New Zealand, low 3.1. Very shallow earthquake there across North Island. And a little bit of activity across Australia. As uh, far as Canada activity goes, we'll run up here and double check the... Uh, the fine folks up in Canada, where, uh, well, this is the western region. If we check out all of Canada here, I guess we can get a better scope of things. It looks pretty quiet out here. Not a whole lot showing up there across Canada right now. Still got the oil, gas and oil fields getting hit out there, but that's in the last month. Not a whole lot of newer activity out here across the Canada area for now. Space weather activity, uh, something's going on here with the SolarHam.com site. I don't know if he knows this or not, but I guess he'll find out. Uh, his solar uh, flare chart is not working. Here's the official site here from the Space Weather Prediction Center. NOAA gov site. Pretty quiet. Almost down into the B flare category as I've been chatting and forecasting here. Things are uh, they're dwindling away in terms of any potential solar flaring. We'll take a look here at the magnetogram image of the sunspots, which, uh, man, they're just not doing all that great out here. Looking fairly um, fairly quiet. We do have, you know, obviously there's sunspot activity, but you have to have some advanced complex uh, sunspots there within the polarity of the magne magnetic structure. And that's that, you know, it kind of creates that special spark there called the solar flare. And right now, um, none of these really have it. I guess if you were to twist my arm and make me pick one, probably be this area back here but even so not looking likely that we're going to see anything strong in terms of solar flare activity um these guys still have a 10 percent. i don't know maybe kevin's busy i'm going to issue a one percent or less probably about a 50 percent chance there for an m flare nothing major going on there for the aurora forecast for now folks as far as the storm prediction center goes a little bit of quietness across the board i bet uh, i bet that's welcome out there there's been so much severe weather out activity out there across the south and the southern plains and the Midwest area. They need a little break, right? I would definitely uh, agree on that. As far as long-term models go, a little break, but it's going to kick back up here, it looks like. Uh, maybe towards the end of April. Look at this moisture returning back, funneling up from the Gulf of Mexico, uh, yeah, the Gulf of Mexico here uh, into Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. A lot of uh, moisture funneling up, and that will stir up the severe weather potential out here, it looks like. So keep an eye on that as we head a little bit, a little bit deeper into the um, April time period. As uh, far as, uh, let's see, I, I think that's about it, folks. There's really not a whole lot happening right now. Seismograph stations out there look pretty darn quiet. Uh, for a Monday night, I guess that's uh, typical, right? We'll keep an eye on things and uh, to see what plays out. Like I said, we've got a couple smaller quakes down there on the Parkfield segment. Uh, we'll watch that. That can that can happen at any given time here because it's in that region here that's experienced a little swarming right on just very close to the Parkfield sec section. And uh, like I say, it's been building up a little steam here for about 21 years. And the average intervals there between 20 and 22 years for a six-pointer. So we're coming up 
Last one was 2004. Got to be getting awfully close. All right. Have a good night, folks. We'll see you guys back out here for the Tuesday morning update. Have a good one.